classic Who feel to it right here. This has such a classic Who feel to it right here. <laughs> Just the way the set looks. <laughs> Notice this. This also has a classic Who feel to it. It really does. Mm. I wonder if she's doing this on purpose or if it's like some kind of mind control thing. Scouts! Major disruption of primary power channel. All systems switch to auxiliary power. Thank All drive you. Thank you. I can't believe everything. Why? Automatic reaction. I'm as surprised as you are. The tendons are not cut. Always a good thing. Mind. Don't worry. I'll remind you. <laughs> <laughs> These are what you wanted to protect. They're fighting for their lives. Who is it? Hello, baby. Two chips resume course for Kentaro. Confirmed. I'll tell you a fact of life, Blake. Change is inevitable. Why else are we fighting? So, quick thoughts on, what was it, The Web? Is that the name of it? Episode 5 of Blake 7. I enjoyed it. It feels kind of like a filler episode. Like, we've got the main setup out of the way. And so, you know, it's, it's you know, old TV where you had those long seasons. I forget how many episodes is in the first season, actually. I enjoyed it well enough. I had forgot about Callie. Is that her name? Callie? Um, that she had joined the previous episode. She had been on the planet. And to find out that the people they're kind of dealing with is like an offshoot of her own people and how they could control her. As I said, it's just kind of standard fare, kind of like a, you know, middle of the road classic who episode. I did like the setting of the planet, especially all the webs everywhere at first. And the idea of them being stuck in the web, which is kind of a fungus, which is weird. The, uh, the, the, the shriveled up bodies weird looking, look really weird. I did like, um, uh, the two actors playing the kind of servants of it, the, the guy and the woman, they did really good at playing these kind of off-kilter characters, so to speak. Uh, not like main characters, just kind of... Like, you can tell there's something off about them. The actors pulled that off really well. I love how they're wearing the futuristic, silver, shiny, metallic spacesuits. I always find that... I don't know why that always amuses me, but it does. Um... And I thought the costumes for the little, like, Muto-like creatures running around on the planet were, were fine. I mean, you know, again, kind of classic Who looking, kind of, kind of, not kind of like the creatures from uh, Full Circle, but not as good as the costumes from Full Circle, kind of like that. It, it was fun. <clears throat> again, I'm really impressed with, uh, what, Gareth, is that his name? The guy who plays Blake. He's really good as Blake. He's really good as Blake. I like Blake. He's just got some good, strong morals. And, of course, of course, Paul Darrow is great as Avon. They, they're kind of the main two cast, it seems like, here in season one. And uh, the way they bounce off each other, because they have very different personalities. But the fact that there is... Affection is not the right word. Fondness isn't quite the right word. But they respect each other as friends. Blake even calling him friend without thinking about it. And Avon actually saving his life at the beginning of the episode. There's a, like a mutual kinship between them. Kinship, I guess that's a good word. That... um. I really like seeing and just I really like the chemistry between them. They uh they have a good rapport together. So this one was was fun. <coughs> like nothing blowing me away, but but I enjoyed it well enough. It was a fun adventure. I want to learn more about the other crew. Um Villa the and then also the kind of heavier set guy and then uh what Jenny is that her name so, what uh, the blonde and then the brunette Callie who just showed up I want to learn more about them and where's Jacqueline Pierce when am I getting Jacqueline Pierce I know Jacqueline Pierce is like one of the bad guys well one of the bad girls uh, like she's supposed to be working for like the Galactic Federation or whatever I wonder when she shows up like I I assumed it was early on like season one maybe it's later. I'm just kind of surprised I haven't seen her yet, so I'm looking forward to seeing her as well. So that's my my early thoughts on the episode. 
Episode 5 of Blake 7. What do you think about it? Comment down below. Let's talk about it. So, Episode 5 of Blake 7. Having slept on it, thought about it, my thoughts pretty much are the same as they were in my <clears throat> initial review. I mean, I thought about whether I even needed to film the second part, but... Yeah, it's just kind of a middle-of-the-road filler episode, uh, kind of like you run into in, well, most TV shows, but classic Doctor Who. Those ones that are just in the middle, they're fine. They're not S-tier, but, but they're fine. They're not bad. That's kind of how this one is. Uh, I think the main thing that impresses me is, uh, was it Gareth? Is that his name? Garth, the guy playing Blake. I like him a lot. And then, of course, Paul Darrow as Avon. Uh, I really like their performances, and I like the characters, how they bounce off each other and their chemistry together. How they're, they're very different personalities, but how they kind of click together. Uh, and I did love the scene. I think I forgot to mention it. Uh, when uh, Avon's telling one of the other guys, yes, but Blake won't always be in charge. And then he, he smiles. He's, heh. I don't see Avon really smile a lot thus far. So that little smile he does, heh. Like, so that's what it takes to make Avon smile. I don't know why that amused me, but that very much amused me. Although I did like that in a punch, he, he when that bomb was about to go off, you know, he warned him ahead of time. When those when, when those lights stop, you have about three seconds, and when they both saw the lights go out, how Avon just grabbed him and pulled him out of the way. <clears throat> uh, and then, of course, he's kind of like, it was a you know reaction. I didn't th even think about it. <coughs> that, was, uh, that, was, that was really neat. But then how when... Blake first learns Avon has beamed down already. And he's like, my friend's out there. So he runs out there to check on him, the way he actually calls him his friend. That's really appealing to me. I thought that was actually pretty neat as well. Uh, the, I like the costumes for the little marsh-looking people. Again, it kind of reminds me of the full circle outfits, but not as good as the full circle outfits. They're neat. They're fine. They they work. Uh, <laughs> and then the, uh, the two characters that are on the planet, the the man and the woman, they're fine. They're Again, as I mentioned in that initial review, I like how their performance gives them this otherworldly feeling, like there's something off about them. The performance of that really comes through from the actors. I still get a kick out of the futuristic silver space suit. I just can't get over that. It's such a cliche when I see it now, like when I'm going back to watch older shows or something, you know, something like even in the Twilight Zone or something, I just get a kick out of that. And I love the original Twilight Zone. It just amuses me looking back at it now. I liked their performance. I thought it was a nice ending. Uh, I, I like that Blake is partial to saving, you know, all life, that he, he, life, you know, living things matter to him. I like that. And, you know, you learn more about his character with each episode, which I really, really enjoy. It was a fun little middle of the road episode. Much like I enjoy Underworld. I think Underworld's underrated in Doctor Who, stuff like that. Just middle of the road, not stellar, nothing to write home about, but not bad either. That's kind of my main thoughts on it. I want to know what you think of The Web from Blake7. Comment down below and let's talk about it. Don't forget to click the like button and the subscribe button. I also have a P.O. box if there's anything you'd like to send me to look at and review. A link to my Amazon wish list is down there. A link to my Amazon UK wish list is also down there. I also have a Patreon if you would like to support me that way. I want to give a shout out to Colin Coney, one of my top tier patrons. I appreciate his support as I do the support of all of my patrons and YouTube members. It's much appreciated. Most importantly, thank you for watching.